Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're continuing to discuss various advancements, generalizations, and improvements over the original GASH framework, and today we're investigating the EGASH, or Exponential GASH, model developed by Nelson in 1991. And we can see that it makes quite a lot of changes with respect to the original GASH variance equation. Here, in the original GASH, we had our conditional variance VT squared being just um, a combination of unconditional variance omega, uh, the immediate disturbance epsilon t minus 1 squared, and the persistence of variance VT minus 1 squared, represented by alpha and beta parameters respectively. And notably, in the GASH framework, all three of the parameters were required to be positive. In eGASH, many of these restrictions are relaxed. And it is achieved by implementing not the usual VT squared as the dependent variable in the conditional variance equation, but the natural logarithm of it over here. It means that the natural logarithm of this variable can be either negative or positive, that would lead to positive variance regardless, so parameters omega, alpha, theta, and beta can be potentially of any size, and that would be interpretable in terms of the volatility process. Furthermore, it accounts for the asymmetric nature of volatility by implementing a structure of terms very similar to TGASH that we have investigated in one of the previous videos, so please check this out if you're interested in TGASH, so please check this out if you're interested in TGASH most of all. However, here we still got our alpha and theta parameters that have uh, as their dependent variables the scaled uh, lag residual uh, E t minus 1 divided by V t minus 1, so it's basically lagged disturbance scaled by lagged conditional uh, standard deviation, and the absolute value of such scaled lagged uh, disturbance. And uh, again, as in standard gauge, you have got the volatility persistence term, beta, but here it's also expressed in terms of the natural logarithm of lagged conditional variance. This al allows to accommodate for both the explosivity of variance behavior and the asymmetry of volatility clustering as well as relieves most of the restrictions on parameters in the original GASH framework. And in terms of the maximum likelihood estimation, it is still the same. We can still express it in terms of the probability density function of the normal distribution with realized variance epsilon t squared and conditional variance vt squared, as well as conditional volatility vt, going into the equation as arguments. And we will maximize our log likelihood based on our five model parameters, which are the mean, the constant mu, uh, the log unconditional variance, here it's interpreted as the natural logarithm of unconditional variance, quite unsurprisingly given the uh, mathematical expression of the conditional variance equation, and our usual uh, alpha, beta, and theta, which is very similar to TGASH, actually. So let's start coding our EGASH in Excel and see how we can optimize the parameters. So first of all, let's start with the constant volatility assumption as usual and try to improve upon that. To do that, let's just post our constant at first to be equal to simple average return over the whole sample. Our logarithm of unconditional variance would be just the natural logarithm of constant variance over here, and we can just paste that like that. And then we can input zeros as all three persistence terms, alpha, theta, and beta, and that would accommodate the constant volatility assumption. The long-run volatility in the EGASH framework can be calculated, first of all, as the exponent, simply because you've got a natural log over here, of your uh, log unconditional variance over 1 minus beta. That would give us our long-run variance, and the long-run volatility can be given as the square root of that. And we can see that we have arrived at exactly the same 
uh, value as we did when just calculating the constant uh, volatility, which is a welcome sign. It means that even in the eGush framework, you can still improve upon your constant volatility assumption and see how persistence terms can improve the explanatory power of the volatility process. Without further ado, we first need to calculate our residuals for every single observation. So to calculate the residual, we need to subtract the constant mu from the realized value of return in every single day, locking the mu straight away. Then we can calculate our squared residuals, and here we only need that for our log likelihood function, as residuals go without squares in the conditional variance equation. Nevertheless, we need them for this particular optimization to a task. And then we need to input lagged residuals. So not lagged squared residuals, but just the lagged residuals over here. Then we can start calculating our conditional variance, and just as with usual gauge models, we need to start with some value that is most often uh, assumed to be equal to the long-run variance, so long-run volatility squared. And then we can start implementing uh, our conditional variance equation with our natural logs. So as we express the natural log of uh, conditional variance, we need to uh, code our conditional variance as an exponent of this expression on the right hand side. So first of all we're inputting the log unconditional variance omega uh, row locked here plus the arch term uh, alpha that would be multiplied by the absolute value of lagged residual divided by lagged conditional volatility so the square root of lagged conditional variance. Then we need to add our asymmetric term theta, locking the row here as well, and multiplying it by the value of the same scaled uh, disturbance without the absolute value taken. So that would account for asymmetry just as it does in the TGush framework. So a lagged residual over lagged conditional volatility, square root of conditional variance. And then we need to add our a gauge term, our uh, conditional variance persistence term, B9, and lock uh, the row here as well, and multiply it by the natural logarithm, ln, of lagged conditional variance. And then we can already enforce this formula and bottom it all the way down and see that in case these three persistence parameters are zeros and our log unconditional variance is equal to the natural logarithm of constant variance, we have got the constant variance assumption, constant volatility assumption reinforced throughout the sample, and graphically we can see it as just a straight orange line representing our e gauge configuration straight away. And we can see that we have got our baseline gauge estimations over here to compare our e gauge results to the standard gauge results. So we'll see if we can achieve a better fit graphically and in terms of log likelihood. But to calculate our log likelihood, we need to implement the probability density function with conditional and realized variance. So let's just do that. We need to input 1 over the square root of 2 pi, and then we need our conditional volatility in the denominator. So we'll just put conditional variance under the square root, and that will achieve the desired objective. And then we need to multiply it by this exponent term, so times the exponent of minus squared residual, which is realized variance, over 2 times the conditional variance vt squared over here. And that would do the job, so to get our log likelihood we can just cal calculate the natural log of this expression, and uh, to make the algorithm converge uh, without crushing on calculational errors, we can implement if error function over here and return a negative number, a very high magnitude negative number, so that the algorithm knows that errors are to be avoided. So for example, minus a thousand, just as we did with a lot of various advanced gauge models. And now we can bottom up it all the way down and calculate our total log likelihood as the sum of log likelihoods throughout the observations. And we can see that this log likelihood is the same as we obtained from the constant volatility assumption previously, which is a good sign. Um, it is welcome. Now we need to calibrate our model parameters mu, omega, alpha, beta, and theta to arrive at the most, um, at the highest value of log likelihood possible. And then we'll see whether the uh, goodness of fit, whether the explanatory power of our e uh, model is greater than that of the simple gauche model. And we can even compare it to t -gush. why not? 
So then let's go data solver and specify our optimization task. We need to uh, input log likelihood as our uh, objective function. We need to maximize that by changing variable cells with our five EGOSH model parameters. So B5 to B9, mu, omega, alpha, theta, and beta. And given the fact we have implemented uh, this caveat that uh, if there is an error, return minus a thousand, we can untick uh, all of the boxes. And again, provided for the fact that EGOSH relaxes a lot of the restrictions on coefficients, omega can be negative, alpha and uh, theta can be negative, and so on and so forth. And we can solve this task using GRG nonlinear, using gradient descent. So we can just click solve and wait until our model arrives at the optimal solution. So that will take some time. And our algorithm has just converged to the optimal parameter values that maximize our log likelihood. We can see that our log likelihood is uh, over uh, 4,400, which is substantially higher than the log likelihood of the standard GASH model. And it's even higher than the log likelihood of the T-GASH model, meaning that E-GASH does account for the dynamics of volatility to a greater extent than those simpler uh, elaborations of the volatility process. If we look at the coefficients and try and interpret them, we can see that our long-run volatility is, uh, again, lower than our constant volatility assumption, and comparing it to GASH and T-GASH, we see that uh, our EGOSH long-run volatility is lower, meaning that in the EGOSH framework, we would relax to lower values of long-run volatility if there are no disturbances, which is, again, a welcome sign, meaning that we capture the troughs of uh, the volatility dynamics to a better extent. We can see that our uh, conditional variance is quite persistent, with beta quite close to 1, and there is notable uh, asymmetry in uh, initial disturbance responses, with some response to the uh, absolute disturbance, absolute scaled lag residual, and uh, there is a negative uh, theta term over here, which means that negative uh, disturbances contribute to greater extent uh, to the conditional variance persistence than positive disturbances. And that's also in line with t gosh assumptions and some stylized facts about how volatility clusters and behaves. Here, uh, omega, the optimal value of omega parameter is negative, which shouldn't be surprising for you, simply because uh, omega is the logarithm of unconditional variance, so that cannot be interpreted as some uh, minimal uh, value of variance. The only way you can interpret it is by plugging in into the long-run volatility calculation. So let's see how well does the EGOSH uh, model proxy the historical dynamics of volatility over here on the graph. And we can see that the orange line of EGOSH does quite a better job than the standard GOSH in gray, with, again, relaxing to further extents uh, in the volatility troughs, and sometimes uh, better proxying our volatility peaks. That reinforces the notion that EGOSH can account for both the asymmetries in the volatility dynamics and the explosivity of the volatility dynamics by accommodating the natural logarithm function. And that's all there is for the Nelson exponential GASH or EGASH model and its implementation in Excel for volatility modeling. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, economics, or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.